The Aymara Indians at Lake Titicaca are still masters of the ancient art of building reed boats. With their help, the German experimental archaeologist Dominic Görlitz is building a Bora III. His goal? To cross the North Atlantic from America to Europe. There are Stone Age rock paintings which depict seaworthy boats. A Bora III will try to answer questions that have long puzzled archaeologists. There is much evidence of regular contact in prehistoric times between the Americas and the Old World. When Tor Heyerdahl reached the Polynesian Islands with the Contiki in 1947, he had proven that early contact with South America was possible, but he kept asking questions. The Sumerians, Phoenicians, and Egyptians all used reed boats similar to those used by the Indians at Lake Titicaca. Could there be a connection that has been overlooked? In 1969, Tor Heyerdahl builds the Ra-1, a reed boat. Starting at the west coast of Africa, he plans to cross the Atlantic and reach the American continent. But his construction does not withstand the rigors of the high seas, and Ra-1 has to be abandoned one day short of the Antilles. Only one year later, Tor Heyerdahl reaches Barbados with Ra-2. Sixty years after Contiki, Dominic Gerlitz follows in the footsteps of Tor Heyerdahl with Abora III. He intends to prove that transatlantic contacts were much more frequent than assumed by scientists today. If early seafarers were able to cross the Atlantic both ways, they must have had maneuverable vessels. Tacking against the wind demanded a sophisticated sailing technique and the use of lee boards. Dominic Gerlitz found prototypes for the Abora in Stone Age drawings of ships with unmistakable lee boards. But how were the seafarers of the ancient past able to get their bearings? Could it be the constellations were more than mythological projections into the firmament? Were they recognized by the seafarers as precise navigational aids? A projection of the familiar star constellations onto the Mediterranean reveals an astonishing congruence. The idea that ancient seafarers were orienting themselves on the main trade routes with the aid of celestial navigation suggests itself. On the small island of Gavrini in Brittany, pyramid-like megalithic buildings bear a series of unexplained stone carvings. An unorthodox reading is, they are a kind of navigational map for the Atlantic, depicting traveling distance between the islands. In the caves of Altamira and El Castillo in northern Spain, enigmatic pre-Ice Age rock paintings were found. Is it possible they were intended to depict the Gulf Stream, including prevailing wind directions? Tor Heyerdahl was on the right track, but even he had not considered an Atlantic crossing via the northern route possible. A Bora III will take advantage of the Atlantic Ocean currents. Amazingly, Opiucus, one of the 48 constellations of the ancient world, exactly reproduces these currents. There is an astonishing correlation with the Great Canarian Current, which Tor Heyerdahl used with Ra 1 and 2. While the Gulf Stream moves from the Caribbean across the North Atlantic and returns to Europe, it is not accompanied by uniform, favorable winds. Were the early seafarers able to sail against the wind along the northern route and reach Europe? The Abora crew is convinced it is indeed possible and will sail from New York to Pontevedra in Spain. Und man merkt, die Tagelung funktioniert, alles ist fest, nichts ist irgendwie im Limit. Also wir könnten jetzt ohne weiteres so durchrauschen bis Amerika. <laughs> With the experience of a Bora 1 and 2, Dominic Gerlitz is confident in the seaworthiness of his vessel. 
Will his team measure up to the challenges of the Northern Route?